जय हिंद लेट मी बिगिन बाय लॉजिंग अ कंप्लेंट अगेंस्ट द पॉन्डी लिट फेस्ट लास्ट ईयर वेन आई वॉज देयर एट द पॉन्डी लिट फेस्ट फॉर अ कपल ऑफ पैनल डिस्कशन आई एंजॉय माई सेल्फ सो थॉरली इट वॉज अ ग्रेट फॉरम दैट आई डिसाइडेड टू राइट अ बुक एंड वेन आई हैव कम आउट विद माई फर्स्ट बुक वेल वी आर ऑल कंस्ट्रेंट टू डू इट ऑनलाइन be that as it may i wish uh, all of us all of you uh, uh, a healthy and a happy year ahead and uh, i thank the pondilate fest uh, for giving me a chance to talk about my first book now allow me to read a small passage uh, from the book in fact this is the last page of the book a passage from the last page and an afterword of the book <clears throat> quote i was once asked at a farewell event before my retirement as to what i considered the biggest achievement of my career i look back at the time that i spent in the army thinking about the high points from the now famous surgical strike to the operational successes awards and medals promotions and placements but it wasn't the wins that played out as i replayed my career it was the love and affection i received from my soldiers and my brother officers a love that was almost like devotion most commanding officers have received this love and loyalty from their men and there is nothing more powerful and moving as these bonds that bind soldiers to one another i was about to talk of this at the event but then i changed my mind instead i told the audiences that the greatest satisfaction for me was the remarriage of the widows of two of my brave hearts who died during the operations unquote that ladies and gentlemen is how i ended my book my first book india's brave hearts and i started it by dedicating it to the indian soldier who asked for so little and yet is ready to sacrifice his life for the country any time i'm very proud to have served with those soldiers so this book is a paperback 12 short stories all my first hand experiences mostly on the line of control published by jagannath uh jagannath books and uh, <clears throat> as i said these are my my first hand experiences mostly of the line uh, on uh, on the line of control i act thank god for giving me a life of soldiering i talk about the now famous surgical strikes i talk about the hardships and heartbreaks of soldiers on the line of control their thrills and triumphs the perils and pains that they face on the line of control are unimaginable i talk about their bonds of love and loyalty in the operations and out of it uh, <clears throat> to give you a flavor let me start by telling you that every infantry officer aspires to command his own battalion when he becomes a colonel and to lead his men in operations in battle god was kind i got both of them i commanded my battalion when i became a colonel in 1998 for three long years all in an operational setting of the line of control in jammu and kashmir and 
This book consists of real life episodes as they occurred during those three years. My one of my favorites in this is the life on LOC. I talk about the details of how we live in bunkers and fight in posts. For that, you will have to read. But let getting into the meat of the story. In 80s, when I was a captain in uh, North Kashmir, in Kupwara, I speak of an incident where the relations between the Pakistani soldiers and Indian soldiers who are faced in an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball configuration in those icy, snowy, mountainous terrain of Jammu and Kashmir. The relations were not so bad and uh, we shouted across uh, Eid Mubarak to them once and they, they brought Semaya and they, we shared the Eid Ki Semaya together. Two decades later, when I was commanding my battalion on the line of control, it is then that uh, in one instance when those those were the days of Kargil war and there was a lot of firing across the line of control, artillery shelling, we were losing many lives and there were several other casualties. In one such incident where I and my team, small protection team, had to walk from one post to another, exposed to enemy fire. In such situations, we used to wear the local dress, a Pathan Salwar suit, to, so that we are not, uh, we don't stand out as soldiers. And the Pakistani soldiers across the post shouted across to ours and said, let your commanding officer not go now. We'll be forced to open fire. And there was, that was the moment when one had to decide. Do we get scared and sit down or do we move ahead? Such are the mind games that are being played on the line of control. You may gain nothing tangible by moving. You may lose your life. But aggressive domination of the line of control calls for such measures. And we shouted across to them. Your first bullet will not get the commanding officer. But as soon as your first, as soon as the first shot is fired, we guarantee you that your post will be flattened. And truly, their post was very vulnerable. They knew it. Three of our posts surrounded them. And yet, we, that was the longest walk. We decided to walk for those 20 or 30 minutes to the next post. It was foolhardiness. But that, but, and they did not open fire. Now that is the kind of uh, life that you lead on LOC. There were several incidents that one talks about. About not wearing a bulletproof jacket. Not wearing a helmet. And why? The, uh, <clears throat> and some other things that you... Uh, there are some things that you learn. Beg your pardon. There are some things that you learn during training. But there are some that you learn on job. However, there are certain things that you can never prepare yourself. You, that you can never learn. That you can never be prepared for. And that is breaking the news. And that's a story by itself called Breaking the News. When you lose a soldier, when you lose a comrade, it's so tough. It is so very tough to break the news to the family. When you've grown up together in the big family of a battalion, how do you break this news to the family? You can never be prepared for it. And something which is tougher is uh, that feeling of guilt that you live with. I always felt guilty that why did I come back alive 
when my comrade didn't, when my officer didn't, when my soldier didn't. And it is tough to break the news on telephone. And I write about another story where those days there were no mobile phones. So I'm talking about family's anxieties where in a row of uh, army accommodation where only those families were staying together whose husbands were posted on the line of control in non-family stations in those risk, high-risk areas. My, my family was one of them. And there was a phone booth under a mango tree. How all the ladies and children would collect around that phone booth waiting for a call from their husband's unit or from the husband to learn of all the well-being of the husband or when operations take place to make sure that the husband was okay. So these are the kind of stories that one needs to learn about. It's, there are bravery stories. There are uh, stories of um, hardships. But the human aspect of it is also something that I've tried to bring out in this. I, I also talk about uh, training. I was a commando instructor when I was a captain. And amongst other things, I used to teach how to catch a snake, take out its venom, the poison, and how to uh, cut it, cook it, and consume it. Why do we need to eat a snake? We teach them how to use uh, this as a part of jungle survival technique. This and many more other interesting episodes uh, that go into making of a commando, the toughest course in the world. Read about that. And while uh, I have narrated all about my uh, <clears throat> uh, operational successes that I had as a commanding officer, the close shaves that we had, some of the funny incidents that we had uh, in, in those uh, tough areas and uh, tough times. But on a serious note, those years taught me life lessons, tactics and empathy. They made me emotionally sensitive but also ruthless at the same time. They taught me how to put my faith in soldiers under me and God above. They also taught me how to harness the power of positive thinking. When, uh, when everything seems uncertain and the path seems unclear, how one should take a leap of faith and aim high. Years later. Years later when I was co-commander in Kashmir, that tragedy at Uri happened when we lost 18 soldiers. 18 young soldiers lost on my watch. It was a dark Sunday for me, a dark day. And that day, I write about it, that when the defense minister wanted to come, God rest his soul, when I was told, late Mr. Parikar is coming down, and I told the defense secretary who called me up and I said, why now? Why today? The army commander was already there. The army chief was on his way. I said, I don't want a, a political leader to be there. But it was so nice of the, prime, uh, of the, of the defense minister to be there. And it raises the morale of the soldier, the rank and file. And that day, that very day, the mood of the nation was such, everyone was so uh, angry. The whole country was angry at the Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. My soldiers wanted revenge. There was outrage in the nation and we decided to turn this pain into an opportunity. And in the confines, in, a, in discussions with the defense minister, with the army chief and army commander, I was present and at that time, we got clearances to do what we did. And 10 days later, we struck a bold repost, something that had never been done before, what is now known as surgical strike, that has changed the way India responds. And 
I salute those brave hearts who went across, who carried out the surgical strike. And the, and God was kind. Fortune favors the brave, I guess. God was kind that we didn't have a single casualty in that operation where we inflicted such great hurt on the enemy. So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> these and some other stories, I speak of some different brave hearts, some youngsters, how they lead men in battle, 20 something old guys, young men, boys becoming men and how they lead seasoned soldiers into battle. It is, it, it, it is such a, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have led such brave soldiers and officers. The army is uh, a great school, a place where I learned everything I know. And above all, it is a family that gave me more friendships, more memories than anything else. What an honor it has been to serve this army and the nation. So uh, here is hoping that uh, you all will <laughs> like to read this book. And I wish you all Happy reading. I hope you enjoy the stories. And once again, I thank uh, Pondy Lit Fest uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak from my heart. Jai Hind!